Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. I have a compilation video today consisting of five um, cases and this is case one. This patient attended with a blocked left ear and it's a combination of earwax and dry skin. And this plug is extending from the entrance where we are now and we know we're at the entrance because of all of these hairs. The hairs in the ears should only be located on the outer third, the cartilaginous portion. That's where the hair follicles are found um, in the inner two thirds of the ear canal, the bony section of the ear. So the outer third is made up of cartilage and the inner two thirds is made up of bone. There shouldn't be any hair follicles. And for that reason, there shouldn't therefore be any protruding hairs extending from the ear canal um, surface. Now, you may get some loose or matted hairs but there shouldn't be any hair, active hairs growing. So we're just giving it a little wriggle and you can see we've extracted that in one large piece. It's quite a dry, solid piece. That's the patient's eardrum. You may see this patient's got a bit of a bony spur or even a couple just at the base of the ear canal. So it's not gonna cause many problems, but sometimes in patients you see these slight abnormalities. So it may just be an osteotoma, so uh, a singular uh, bony growth may have just been there from birth. Um, it may even be some exostosis, very early stages. Um, but this, this patient, exostosis is when you develop bony spurs in response to cold air or cold water. It's also known as surface ear. So the theory behind it is when you're exposed to cold air or water, the, um, you, you experience dilation of the blood vessels in the periosteome, which is a sheath that lines the bony part of the ear canal. And when the blood vessels dilate there, it initiates um, osteoblasts, which are uh, cells, specialist cells found on the surface of the bone. And these um, osteoblasts are involved in the formation of new bone. So, uh, but in that case, it's nothing to be concerned of. Um, and this is patient two. So they've got a bit more of a tighter, narrow ear canal entrance. So I'm just trying to tease this out. So I'm just trying to separate it from the roof of the ear canal. So it's quite impacted here. And the reason why we're so close to the wax is because the wax is near the entrance. So um, the, the endoscope is having to be quite close to enter the ear. And when you've got the wax, therefore, closer uh, near the entrance, it's going to appear zoomed in. I'm just using the St. Bart's ear hook. I'm going, trying to get in at the top of the ear canal but it's a bit of a tight squeeze. So here I'm just chiseling it into little pieces. Again, I'm gonna go in with the endoscope and because I've chiseled it, I'm gonna vacuum some of the loose pieces. So guys, um, yesterday you may have seen a, a video that I uploaded. It's um, of an ENT physician in America that did a duet on TikTok, if anyone is aware of what a duet is on TikTok. And so very honored and humbled. Um, received some lovely messages but guys there was a few kind of messages there which were not very polite and pleasant to this ENT physician um, someone referred to him as a Neanderthal in terms of the way he speaks and someone called him arrogant it's just not nice reading these things guys um, I mean the, he's just doing a TikTok duet and there's no need to be nasty um, I even received a couple of emails um, and the people who sent me the emails that they, they were set doing so in kind of my best interest but they were questioning the credentials of this ENT physician because in their opinion they didn't really sound like an ENT physician and they were trying to promote this other ENT product but I had to forward um, a full resume of this uh, ENT uh, specialist um, so he, he does exist he's real he's actually a colleague um, I later found out he's a he's a he's a associate of a colleague uh, that I know in America so I just kind of urge everyone just to be a bit nice. It's just, you know, there's no need for it, I don't think. So, I mean, if that ENT physician reads the comments, it can be quite upsetting. So I appreciate not everyone likes content, um, but then you don't have to watch the content, you know. It's just that, I don't know, I just feel, obviously there's loads of lovely comments and very com complimentary comments of this individual, but... There was just a few that I just feel they're under the belt and just not necessary. Why can't we just be nice to one another? And if you don't, if you don't like 
someone then you don't have to watch and you don't have to even comment um you're welcome to your opinion everyone it's, it, it's just you know you can just decide not to to comment and just turn just just not watch or it's just but yeah i just felt like saying that because i didn't feel it was appropriate me having to to defend this ent consultant um and as i said a couple of emails that questioning whether this person was legit um so anyway um i just wanted to to get that off my chest because i just don't think it was nice um Anyway, patient three, so this one, you can see it's a large piece of wax really deep in the ear and they'd use a cotton bud. You would have seen the indentation there. Now, if you just hang on and watch this plug being removed, you'll see something interesting. So again, I'm just reverting to the ear hook here. And because we're approaching the bony part, you've got to be careful. You can see I'm just trying to make an opening there. We managed to kind of manipulate the wax in order for me to insert the hook in and behind. So you can see here, there's uh, this wax was adhered to the base of the ear canal and there is a little, um, you can see there some fungal spores, some hyphae developing on that little swelling there. So I'm just gonna hoover that out. So you can see here, there's just a bit of, almost a pimple I wouldn't call it a furuncle because furuncles are more located um, on the outer third of the uh, of the cartilaginous portion. But so that's been referred to their GP for appropriate medication because they've definitely got um, some aspergillus uh, otomycosis there, and it's quite possible that trauma would have been caused by the patient using a Q-tip or cotton bud pushing the wax in. So another interesting one here. So again, I would just recommend staying and watching till the end, but. Uh, this is the patient four with the left ear. I've just installed some medical grade olive oil spray. And you'll start seeing it in a moment. You can see that white keratin there, the, the floor of the ear canal. Whenever I see keratin like that, I'm thinking one of two things. I'm thinking keratosis obturans, which it wasn't in this case because this is quite localized. Keratosis obturans, which is an accumulation of a dead skin plug, that you typically get a widening and expansion of the ear canal. It's global, it's all the way around the perimeter. But here, there's going to be, you can see this dead skin is more on the floor of the ear canal and it's more localised. And it's typically one of two things. It could be some uh, benign osteonecrosis. That's when the patient's blood flow to the, the, the bony part of the ear canal, typically inferiorly the floor, is reduced and therefore the bone uh, hasn't got the necessary oxygen, nutrients, minerals that it needs to sustain itself. So it starts to decay, um, uh, as we call that necrosis, until eventually you get sequestrium of the bones, the bone separates, which creates a ditch, a pothole. And when you've got a pothole at the floor of the ear canal, the skin sinks, and then that skin can get infected itself sometimes. We call that periosteitis. And then you get an ulceration of the skin. Or it could be something a bit more rarer, a canal cholesteatoma, which if I hedge my bets, I would say is that. Now, there's no active discharge from what I can see, however, which is normally one of the signs of a canal cholesteatoma. But this skin, uh, it's ulcerated. It's obviously inflamed around the edges. So I'm just cleaning up any loose skin here. So in between... So just at the floor, it is an ulceration. There's the skin missing there, and the bony part of the ear canal is exposed. So again, this patient has been referred onwards to ENT. The patient doesn't have any symptoms here, no pain, no otalgia, and quite often that can be the case with a uh, canal cholesteatoma or benign osteonecrosis. It's unknown to the patient. Um, this patient did use a cotton bud, so even um, trauma caused by a cotton bud can initiate the onset of a canal cholesteatoma, so you just got to be careful because uh, causing a micro abrasion on the floor of the ear canal, you damage that delicate layer of skin. Uh, it can become ulcerated, then the periosteum, which is that sheath that supplies the blood and nutrients and nerves to the bone, gets exposed, that can get infected, and then you can get dead skin accumulating in that um, area, that localized area, and that dead skin, um, it can release proteolytic enzymes which then can infect the uh, periosteum and the underlying bone and cause 
uh, erosion of the bone, necrosis of the bone, and it can then spread all around the temporal bone, up towards the brain even. Uh, it can lead to a brain abscess, which is a bit more rarer with a canal cholesteratoma as opposed to middle ear cholesteratoma. But then it can go forward to the temporal mandula joint, to the jaw joint region, or posteriorly to the mastoid bone, which is the bone behind the ear canal. This is patient five. Again, a narrow, narrowish ear, uh, really impacted wax. So we're just teasing that out, just using the fine end suction probe here. And just managing to tease that out. So there's some residual wax there. So we're just gonna, a little bit on the eardrum. I think I hovered over that, it didn't come away, so I just left it, it was no, no, no point risking it. So just managed to get, you can see I just hovered over, a little bit came away, but I just decided to leave that because it wasn't going to, um, if it came away, fantastic. We would we tried, but there's no point risking perforating eardrum unnecessarily. It's not going to affect the hearing that, just mopping up near the entrance. So I hope you enjoyed that compilation video, guys. Um, quite a bendy ear canal as well there, you may have seen. Um, do stay tuned for more videos. I've got loads more to upload in the next few days and weeks. And remember, um, uh, yeah, continue to watch and just just be nice and kind to each other. Um, you know, I think I think you know we all deserve that. All right, thank you. Bye.